Hey Anilovers, welcome to another channel video. In today's video we are going to talk about an anime called Spirit Realm. For more videos like this don't forget to leave your like and subscribe to our channel. The anime begins with a wedding ceremony of the members of a family called Feng. Besides the wedding, they are celebrating having achieved a great victory over another family called Ling. And I think you can tell from the names alone that we are talking about a Chinese anime. It turns out that the Feng family ceremony is suddenly interrupted when a masked person with a power in one eye breaks in. Apparently this person is part of an evil clan capable of manipulating souls. He defeats all the guards alone with his powers and eliminates all the members of the Feng family who were present there. Yes, the mysterious being with the power in his eye is extremely powerful. Next, let's understand a little more about the world of the anime, where humans fight against demons in a lower land to prevent them from being able to invade the world of humans. And it is in this setting that we meet our protagonist Kim Lee. He is on an expedition in the lower lands to confront a soul-eating beast that is a great threat to humanity. He is in a group of humans with superpowers that is being led by a beautiful girl with white hair. And for some reason, the protagonist has tremendous anger towards the Feng family and also does not like to follow orders from his superior. But regardless of this, we soon notice that he is extremely powerful. After all, he is able to protect his childhood friend Yushi by himself. Even after having saved the girl, Kim Lee alone is able to eliminate a gigantic demon without having to make much effort. Thanks to him, his group moves forward and finally manages to get to the soul-eating beast. And the reason the beast has this name is because it gets stronger with each soul it succeeds in devouring. The group's attack begins again with Kim Lee using his lightning powers to immobilize the beast. After that, the white-haired leader begins a ritual and releases a sealing power to further weaken the beast. However, when she uses this power, she becomes vulnerable to any blow. Therefore, the other guild members need to protect her, because any weak blow can take her life. And well, everything was going according to plan in the attack. But suddenly a hairy boy named Gao Yu decided to act without thinking and went off on his own against the monster. The first episode then closes with the monster fighting back the hairy boy's attack and it looks like he is about to get very bad. At the beginning of the second episode we have a flashback where we see Kim Lee together with Gao Yu and Yushi. Apparently, the three are childhood friends and in the past Kim Lee was trying to create spirit weapons to impress Yushi. He almost always ended up failing, but the fact is that their connection is quite old. Therefore, Kim Lee and Yushi despair when they see the danger that Gao Yu is in for his recklessness at the end of the previous episode. And as I said, Gao Yu was about to receive a fatal attack, but luckily Yushi was able to use an extremely convenient magic to manipulate time and manage to save the hairy man. Only things were getting more and more chaotic. After all, the soul-eating beast they were facing was trying to lure more monsters over there to devour them and become even more powerful. Because of this, a general confusion started in the middle of the battle, and suddenly the beast ended up devouring Yushi. And unfortunately, we find out that after being devoured by a beast, a human starts to lose his soul slowly. Apart from Kim Lee, the rest of the group hardly seems to care about the loss of the girl and are preparing to eliminate the beast at any cost. Perhaps, that would be the most logical option, but Kim Lee is not in the mood to acknowledge the loss of his girl. Gao Yu even tries to stop Kim Lee, only he is too powerful and, in his anger, he ended up losing control of his power and summoned a thunderbolt directly from the skies to the monster. The detail is that with this he achieved an unprecedented miracle. After all, as said before, the power of lightning is able to reach the soul of beings. And with his thunder, Kim Lee somehow managed to connect with Yushi's soul that was being lost and managed to bring her back to life. More than that, he managed to single-handedly reverse the outcome of the battle that was practically lost after the white-haired girl's seal lost its effect. So, thanks to him, no one in the group ended up with a fatal fate. Anyway, after the battle, they go to the very base of the Feng family that appeared to be destroyed at the beginning of the anime. While analyzing the results of the battle, Kim Lee informs the group that someone had manipulated the family members into attacking each other. Upon hearing this, the beautiful white-haired leader deduces that this was the work of the evil clan. And well, we know she is right from the beginning of the anime, but at the end of the episode she does something unthinkable. For some reason she concluded that Yushi was responsible for all that destruction and she simply gave the girl a fatal blow right in front of Kim Lee. Yeah, so much effort to save Yushi and Kim Lee sees her being attacked right in front of him by an ally. I'm curious to know what will happen in the next episode. And things right from the start are pretty tense, because after seeing Yushi get hit, again Kim Lee is about to lose control. He has quick flashbacks of the past next to her and is completely enraged. With his lightning powers, he sets out to attack together with Gao Yu against the silver-haired girl. Only unfortunately both he and Gao Yu end up being defeated. In a matter of seconds, the protagonist saw his two best friends being attacked right in front of him by the very group they were part of. Worst of all, after this betrayal, the leader of the group was about to finish Kim Lee off once and for all, but luckily he was saved at the last second by a legendary hermit named Lai Mu and his spirit wolf. And this old man stopped her attack with just one hand. Lai Mu saved Kim Lee by pure chance after seeing that the boy was holding a wooden statue that was valuable to him. Thus, the mysterious hermit demands that the white-haired girl let him leave together with Kim Lee. Perhaps because she was afraid of the hermit or for some other reason, the girl allowed them to leave. 
After this, Kimberly wakes up in a legendary land filled with snow next to the wolf and the wise man. He doesn't understand anything that is happening, so Laimu explains that he saved the protagonist because he knew his grandfather, and he recognized this whole connection just by the wooden statue Kim Lee was carrying. The guy really is a sage. Anyway, besides revealing that he was friends with the protagonist's grandfather, Laimu also says that Kim Lee can save his friends if he can get into a legendary clan called Kichu. However, this task would not be easy at all, as thousands of people wanted to join the clan. Only for this to be possible Kim Lee would have to risk his life to get past the 12 ancient mystical spirit pillars. Having no choice, Kim Lee accepts the challenge to save his friends, and before he separates from the hermit, he receives a magical weapon of darkness from him as a gift. The hermit says that this weapon will be useful at the right time so that Kim Lee can pass the test. Yeah, wise way of saying he was delivering something very powerful. And then, in the last scene of the episode, we see that Gao Yu is really alive and he has awakened in a kind of dungeon with several bodies around him. The anime gets more and more tense. Fortunately, it doesn't take long to find out what is happening to Gao Yu, because at the very beginning of the fourth episode we see that he is trapped in the dungeon with a gigantic baby demon who is wearing a sumo suit for some reason. This monster was responsible for all the human bodies that were in that dungeon. He literally treated the humans as if they were toys. Gao Yu confronts the demon, but things are not easy for him. After receiving a blow and flying away, Gao Yu finally discovers that the dungeon he was in was in the nether world. He has no idea how to get out of there and is in serious trouble in his battle. Cut to the scene and we are back following Kim Lee. He has finally arrived at the site of his test to join the Kiju clan. There are several competitors competing for the position. He is guided by an extremely beautiful examiner and the first test consists simply of climbing up a mountain through spiritual pillars. Basically, if you step on the wrong pillar or lose control of your spiritual power the pillar collapses and you fail the test. Yes, the test was quite complicated, and to make matters worse, a hairy half-wit broke all the pillars after making it through. Besides him, only one other competitor had managed to pass the test, and his attitude made it almost impossible for all the other participants to attempt the test. And I say made it almost impossible, after all Kim Lee was not shaken by this and managed to complete the test by concentrating his lightning spirit magic on his feet. In that hour, he proved his true value and caught everyone's attention, including the beautiful examiner from the Kiju clan. After Kim Lee's success, we have a new vision of Gao Yu, and unlike Kim Lee, he was not doing well at all against the demon in sumo clothes. In fact, the episode closes with him being saved by a mysterious warrior in armor. Well Antelopers, this ends the fourth episode and also our recap. Please comment if you would like a part 2 and don't forget to subscribe and leave your like to help the channel keep growing. Until the next video with a new summary of another amazing anime.